I will pray before I preach, but I'm not going to do that now because we are there. I believe that the worship that God has already blessed us to go into is an aspect of your praising him. And so I'm going to ask you a question that I know you already have an answer to, which is, are you ready for the word? Yes, bless God, bless God, bless God. So God is going to take us into a space right now, and our worship has entered us into a space where God is going to continue a discussion about spiritual warfare. But there's a thing that I want to take you into, and we're going to get to a spot fairly quickly. Say the five stones. Now, we've talked about in spiritual warfare, what we've dealt with already is 1 Samuel 17, 40, where it says he picked up five smooth stones from a stream and put them into his shepherd's bag. Then armed with only a shepherd's staff and sling, he started across the valley to fight the Philistines. Now, we've talked throughout the month of January, and now we're starting in February. We're dealing with David and his ability to go fight Goliath, this giant that was terrifying the children of Israel. Even King Saul wasn't willing to go fight him. And we talked about how David was victorious in God and things of that nature. But now we're going to spend five sermons five sermons dealing with each one of the five stones because see when David picks up this particular stone he only picks up five but I just believe in my spirit that each stone looked different and each stone had a purpose and when he had picked up five he was prepared for war and in our lives there's going to be five stones that we are going to pick up lady e uh sister erica did a great job earlier in the first service talking about how all of us are in need and how we are to give to the needy and she said that the lord blessed her and she talked about the five stones and all of us need spiritual healing and all of us need emotional healing and all of us need financial healing and all of us need physical healing and all of us need relational healing and that's why we're here in this house Because we are in the need of something. And so we're going to get to a place today where we're going to start focusing. Each one of these messages is going to focus on one of the five stones. I want you to think about something as we get ready to run to a spot. When David reaches into the shepherd's bag, he has no idea of which stone he's going to pull out. But it was necessary for him to have all five. And for us here at GCDC, there's an aspect of five stones that we're going to live our lives by. We're going to be spiritually mature, emotionally healthy, financially wise, physically fit, and relationally connected. And see, you can't have, you can't operate in this life without having all five of those in some way, shape, or form. And they all affect every other one. And so today, we're going to get to a spot real quick. We're going to get to a spot, and it's stone one, and it's the spiritual stone. And I want you to say spiritually mature. mature. Say spiritually mature. mature. So the first stone we're going to talk about today is the spiritual stone and what it means to be spiritually mature. Now, when a person is spiritually mature... They, it's an aspect of having or showing the spiritual, mental, and emotional qualities of an adult. You, it's having a fully grown or developed body, having reached a final or desired state. And so what we're going to talk about is God is going to bless, and then when we get to the main scripture for today, you'll be able to stand to your feet. There's an aspect of spiritual maturity that God wants us to get to inside his house. But what winds up happening so many times is we don't talk about what it means to be spiritually mature. You can be in the household of faith. You can have accepted Jesus Christ at the age of 10 years old and be 50 years old and still be spiritually immature. See, we think that maturity comes with age and it doesn't. Maturity comes with work. 
Maturity comes with experience. Maturity comes with obstacles and stumbling blocks and all these things that will happen. There's some things that you need to experience inside of God through our relationship with him, which says you will be mature after you have gone through these things. But sometimes what we wind up doing is we live our lives in spaces of immaturity. We live our lives in, in, in relationships or in ways in which we will retaliate and then we'll use certain things as trigger words for us to say that I don't have to be mature. We'll say things like, that's just how I am. And sometimes we'll even put it on God. That's just the way God made me. Sin broke you. He didn't make you jacked up. It's sin that messes us up. And sometimes we believe the lies of the enemy. And so we'll just say this just who I am. No, that's not how you are. That's how you are chosen to be. Or that might be, you've even maybe had some experiences that have put you into a spot. I got to share this real quick. We are blessed to have the healing care group at the church. And there's some women going through it with uh, Elder Armour and Nicole and Lawanda. They're doing this great job. And what they're helping people do is deal with wounds that they've had. But watch this. But through that process, it brings them to a place of not just identifying the wound, but maturing in an experience. To where when you face certain things, and I just got to share this, there's a time out for immaturity in the household of faith. Relationships get destroyed. Watch this. If we had a sandbox, and I'll run to a spot real quick. If we had a sandbox and we called it church, sometimes we throw sand in the face of the friends that are in the sandbox. And watch this. And don't mess around and have a bucket that your friend ain't got. And you making your little sand castle and all the rest of this. And you think your castle is the greatest castle. And you think this person is your friend. And the minute that you turn your back, they just do there go your little sand castle. Think you're going to be blessed without me being blessed. And then they'll take your bucket and go make their own little thing. There's an aspect of sometimes where immaturity just like that, but it happens inside the house. And God says, I don't want my people to be immature. See, I, he can't feed us meat if all we want is milk. And at the end of the day, we got to start to develop a desire for the meat of God's word, for these experiences that we just had where you get into this space and you feel how awesome he is. Then he says, now listen, what I want with the mature you to go out and share how I am with you every single day. So watch this real quick. We got to run to a spot real quick. So what I want you to do, stand to your feet because we're going to run into this space very quickly because there's a place that we got to get with these three things. And we're going to be in Philippians 3, verses 12 to 16 today. And starting at verse 12, it says, I don't mean to say that I have already achieved these things or that I have already reached perfection. Say perfection. But I press on, say press on, to possess that perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed me. You may be seated. There's a place in spiritual maturity where Paul is talking to the Philippian church and he wants to get them into a space. So I want you to understand, this is the first stone that we as God's warriors are going to pick up. This is the first stone that we're going to focus on because watch this, it's going to have a ripple effect on all the other stones. And so through this experience, and I pray that you receive what God will have us to receive in this message, Paul is saying to these individuals inside the household of faith, and I think that that's unique, he's not talking to worldly folk. He's not talking to those that don't know Jesus. He's talking to those that have a relationship with Jesus Christ, and he's telling them this. He says, I don't mean to say that I have already achieved some stuff. I want you to understand that there's some things that Paul had done where he could have gotten high-minded and boastful and all the rest of that. But Paul said, I'm still working towards it like y'all working towards it. Paul said, regardless of all the things that God has done in my life, I still have not achieved some things. There's still a to-do list that I got for Almighty God. There's some things that I have not done yet, and some of y'all want to focus on all the awesome stuff that happens. That's great, but he's going to tell us that there's a place that we should always be looking forward to. But watch this. He goes further. He says, listen, I want, you, I want to talk about this perfection thing. He says, I don't want you to think that I've already reached perfection. I don't want you to think, oh, I love God for that. I don't want you to think that God's done with me yet. 
I don't want you to think that I never fail. I don't want you to think that I don't have problems. I don't want you to think that I don't still make mistakes. I don't want you to think that I walk on water like Jesus. There's only one of him. So I don't want you to think that I'm perfect, but watch this. I can point you to who is. I can point you to who makes me or who helps me or who sanctifies me or who blesses me. I can get you to that space. Watch what he says. He says, but I'll press on. Say press on. I like press on. Press on is a place. I just got to stay in that just for a second. Press on is a place that not everybody gets accustomed to practicing. See, when you got to press, that means it is something trying to stop you from getting somewhere. And at the end of the day, the enemy's whole job is to stop you from doing what God wants you to do. There's some things that you got to just push your way to. I ain't talking about no job. I ain't talking about relationships. I'm talking about being in relationship with Jesus Christ. We press a lot of places, but we got to press to Jesus. There's some stuff the enemy want to stop you from getting to a place in Jesus where you can start to be perfected. See, that's the whole thing. He understands that we are imperfect, but if you sit outside, the person who can help you be perfected, you will never get there. That's why you got to press. That's why some blessings take a pressing in order for it to happen. When I iron my clothes, I iron them on high heat because I want good creases. Get to a spot. You got to press for some stuff. You got to get to a place where you will not allow your flesh Doubt whatever it is to stop you from getting to Almighty God. When you press, it's different. When I deal with people that press, we ain't got to encourage each other. We just walking together. Look, are you a little tired? Let's go. Let's get this in. But some folk, real quick, got to stay in the space. Some folk, it's hard to press them to get out the bed. Some folk, it's like, oh my goodness, really? To the household of We going again? Again to the spot? You praying again? You reading the word again? Do you understand? I got to get in the word just to understand what pressing really means. Because the world got it twisted. The world wants you to press for you. If I press for Jesus, I get energy. I get invigorated. There's some virtue I might lose, but there's some virtue I get back. There's double portions of blessing I can get when I press into God. Let me get here. I'm happy about pressing, but I press on. Watch this. Because there's something I want to possess. Watch this. See, we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these things, you know, he'll add unto us. He'll take care of all of our needs. But watch this. In order to get perfected, I got to press. I got to press to possess it. Hmm. Watch this. That means that it's just right outside my reach, but I got to keep going. Some of us, it's like, you know what, at the end of the day, we'll, get, we'll just say, no, you know, it take too much. It don't take all that. It take all that and more. It takes some stuff you don't even know that it take. But when you press to possess, watch this, not the perfection inside of you, but, but, but the perfection in Jesus. See, watch this. He's going to get us to a spot where he says, listen, I know me in Jesus. There's some stuff that I know about me that maybe not anybody else knows, but I know about who I am in Jesus. And he's perfect. So if I press to he's who perfect, who's perfect, there's some stuff in me that's going to change. Watch this real quick. There's some stuff that will start to fall off in your life when you start to allow Jesus to take control. And when you press into him, he will help you understand that some of our reactions and some of the stuff that we do, we will stop doing if we struggled and we pressed to possess his perfection and how he does things. So watch this. Let's get to this next part real quick. Oh, I, I, But I got to give you the last part. Because, see, he says Christ Jesus first possessed him. You know what's interesting? Christ gives his life. Paul says he gives his life for him. And then Paul has the audacity to press to get to a place of being able to possess the perfection in Christ. Now watch this. If it's good enough for Paul, who used to be Saul, who killed Christians, it's sure enough need to be good enough for us to be able to do it. And watch this. And don't put Paul on no pedestal because watch what happens next. Let's get here. He says, watch this. He says, no, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing real quick, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. Say forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. 
See, he goes through this. He said, listen, y'all got this twisted. Y'all done seen a lot. Y'all think a lot. But I ain't there yet. I'm not where I'm going to be. I'm never going to get there until I take my last breath. So at the end of the day, I'm going to keep pressing. But I want you to understand this. I press with focus. Say focus. Focus. Some of us, oh, I love God for this. When I got these new bifocals, things came into greater focus. I reached the age where my eyes in and of themselves was not doing the job that they needed without help. And watch this. I understood that I had a weakness and I had enough humility inside myself in God to say, I am tired of holding things way out here. I need to be able to read stuff up close. So I went to somebody and I told them that I have a weakness in my eye. Because if my eyes can't see correctly, I cannot focus. See, some of us, we got some stuff that's in the way. There's some things that's blocking our focus. There's some people that got to move. There's some issues you got to stop dragging with you. So watch this. He said, listen, there's one thing. And watch this is a trip. Paul says, there's only one thing. All this stuff God got him doing, he said, I'm focused on one thing. He says, I practice every day forgetting, watch this, the past. Think about this. Paul used to kill Christians when he was Saul. He gets a brand new name in Jesus Christ. How many people will whisper as Paul goes by? Remember him? Ooh, that's that dude. That's that one right there. You going over there praying with him? Uh Uh-uh. You know, he took out a whole slew. He was there when Stephen was, uh, that dude ain't different. He can't be different. Watch this. All the whispers. And then watch this. If he messed around and let the enemy get his ear, right? And some of us let the enemy get both ears. We let him talk like he headphones to us. Right? He done snuck around the helmet of salvation that's supposed to keep him out. And you done messed around and let him whisper sweet nothings in your ear. Because that's what he do, sweet nothings. Ain't about nothing. Ain't going to do nothing. Ain't going to help you with nothing. But you keep letting him whisper in your ear. So watch what happens. So he gets this. He said, he says, I focus on this one thing. I try every single day to forget the past. Don't tell me about who I used to be. I don't need to talk to you about when I used to drink and I used to do that and I used to do this and I used to be this way and I used to be that way. That person is dead. That person no longer exists. And so what I want to do, what I need to be focused on, I need to focus, watch this, on what is coming. What is before me? What is the future going to be like? Oh, I love God for this. There's a place that he says, listen, I'm looking forward to what lies ahead because my past is behind me. And the only way that my past, watch this, can get in front of me is if I turn around and spend all my time looking at it. Wondering why you can't move forward because you're busy in a reverse direction. Looking at things that, watch this, that you can't change. Whatever you didn't do in 2015, you can't go back. Ain't no time machines. This ain't back to the future. You're going to run back and change something. You can get tomorrow better. You could have a better second in the next couple of seconds, but we can't change what we did in the past. You can learn from it, but you can't change it. So let's get to this next part real quick. I got to run the three things. He says, I press on. There he go again. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God through Christ Jesus is calling us. Watch this real quick. See, what Paul confirms for all of us is that God is calling all of us. See, some of us think a calling is just your spiritual position. Some of us think a calling is just what you're going to do, and it's a title tied to it. He said, no, all of us, Jesus is calling all of us. God is calling all of us through Jesus Christ to do what? To press on to reach the end of the race. Watch this real quick. I love God for this. This should be a space where there's a race that you know that you're in. It shouldn't be one that you sit and watch and other people run. And the reason why I love God for this, spectators have a whole different perspective. They don't know what it means to press. They don't know what it means to get that ache in the side when you're running and you done reached your breaking point and you got to run through the pain. They don't know what it means to press to get just one more rep. They don't know what it means to press to just take one more step because they just sit and watch it. And you know the funniest thing about spectators is spectators always want to tell you how to do it without being on the track. 
You should have. <laughs> yeah, you, you know what? You, sh- you should have took a time out, right? And watch the spectators always want you to stop. But you know what's funny? You ever watched a marathon race? You know what's funny about a marathon race? Like sprints. Sprints is like real quick. But marathons, you know what they do in marathons? These people run for miles. And you know what they do? They put little outposts of water and snacks and all the rest of this. Because watch this. They expect them not to stop. They tell them, take this and keep running. Because if you don't take this and keep running, you ain't going to finish. Oh, I love God for this. What if I'm running a race and there's some scripture? Ooh, oh, I'm, a, I'm on somebody block. What if I'm running a race and this discipleship training? What if I'm running a race, watch this, and this foundation of the kingdom? Right? A little bit of prayer. Let me pick up some prayer. Whatever it is, right? But watch this. If I keep running and I don't get it, oh, I can't make it. Why is this week different than last week? I was, ooh, ooh. Mm, I was all prayed up. Go to the house and take a nap. I'm just tired today. I'll get it next week. Did you notice what happened? See, when you don't pick up what you need to get where you're going, you get weaker. Mess around and watch this. There's times when you're going to be outside the house of the faith. I understand that I need the people of God because I need God. Y'all missed that. See, when, you, when we love in God with everything we got, and then he says, love your neighbor as yourself, that's a joint deal. I need him. I know people that say, I love God, but the relational piece ain't there. And I ask myself, well, how can you show us agape love just to yourself? I thought, I thought love meant was supposed to be shared. You share with me, myself, and I. I get that. But what about the people outside your, your little trinity? So we got to press on to reach the end of the race and receive. Watch this. There's a, watch this. I love God for this. Watch this. There's a heavenly prize. There's a prize you ain't going to get here. Watch this. And some of us is like, well, Pastor, if I ain't going to get it here, well, I'm going to run. Because, see, in eternity, there's a prize that some of us go have. And you're going to mess around, and once you get there, there's going to be some people that are going to be like, see, this is what Preston got you. You ain't got this one. And then you're like, no, send me back. No, 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 no. You have one shot at this thing. Right? So watch this. Get to here. Let all who are spiritually mature, say spiritually mature, agree on these things. Ah, I love God for this. And then he says, if you disagree on some point, I believe God will make it plain to you. I love God for that. Mm. See, what I used to deal with was there's levels of spiritual immaturity that I struggle with and God is blessing, but there's levels of spiritual maturity that he's taking me to. And what I used to think was, okay, everybody needs to be in the same space, and that's not true. Mm -mm. When I was in eighth grade, I didn't hang out with kindergartners. But watch this. But we went to the same school. And I didn't expect out of a kindergartner what I expected out of an eighth grader. Mm -hmm. See, there's some individuals who expect kindergartners to be eighth graders. And watch this, and there's some eighth graders that act like kindergartners. But I need to mature and know who I'm talking to first. If I go to a kindergarten and I start talking about division and multiplication and all these other uh, mathematical facts, they're going to look at me like, just I play with blocks. It's one and one. I said, I don't know all of this, right? So what winds up happening, watch this, and then I spend all my time trying to make a kindergartner an eighth grader rather than allowing God to mature them through the process. But watch this, but when I get around eighth graders, oh, bless God for this one. When I get around eighth graders, there shouldn't be no baby talk. Mm. Shouldn't be issues where we cannot agree. And this is the thing that I'm starting to learn. If you don't agree, that's cool. Take it to God. Don't take it to me and try to make me agree with your statement. Let's go to the word. If the word say it, we'll do it. If, if you don't believe it, I'm going to walk away and let God do the rest. See, some of us spend all of our time arguing. And I got to say this. Just because I'm an attorney don't mean that I like to argue. Some people think, well, well, I'll just debate the fact. Apologetics is when you want to debate certain things. I don't apologize for nothing. 
But the thing that I won't do is I won't argue to get you to a point. You know why? Because what does he say here? He says, if you disagree on some point, and there's going to be disagreements in the household of faith. I'm good with that. We could agree to disagree. That's good. But watch this. There's a place that we got to get. Because watch this. He says, I believe. You ever seen them kids at a game? They start to chant, I believe. I believe that. Some of y'all ain't been to games. I believe that we will win. I believe that we will. That's the biggest chant. Go to a game. Just go to a high school game so you can understand. Because you know what? When they start chanting that, the whole crowd gets amped. What if we did that in the household of faith? I believe that. What? He says, I believe that God will make it plain to you. That's what I'm going to start chanting to people. We disagree. I believe that God will make it plain to you. Because it ain't my job. Watch this, counseling is over. It's for you and God to get together. Because he's going to watch this. He's going to make it as plain as the hand before your face. Because sometimes people won't receive because of you. Ain't got nothing to do with God. Sometimes it's just us. So watch what he says next, though. This is the place we got to get to. He says, but we must. Say, but we must. Watch this real quick. Hold on to the progress we have already made. See, watch this real quick. I I, I need to take you to a space, and we're going to run to three things. This step right here, this one that I just made, watch this one. And this one right here, I got to hold on to those. See, that I just pressed from behind to get to this place. But watch this. I can't give this ground up. If I move this foot up here, now I got to press. I got to stand firm. Because, see, I got to hold on. That was his progress, right? Watch this. He doesn't say that you got to hold on when you regress. When you backslide, ain't no hold, no. You're just sliding. But watch this. But when I take this step, this step means something. Because watch this. When I take this one, he done took two towards me. Y'all missing that. <laughs> see, because if I hold, he going to get closer. But watch this. If I got the audacity, left foot move. And I stomp it into the ground. Watch this. Now I'm at a different space. Now I'm not giving this ground up. Because he done just took two towards me. Sometimes we mess around. And it's easy to give up. It's easy to not press. It's easy to get to a place where you just think it's bigger than you. I'm going to share something before we get done. Three things. Say three things. First thing. Say imperfect Imperfect. perfection. I love this word. I love these words because you know what? They don't make sense together. It's an oxymoron. When you look at them, it's like how could you have imperfect perfection? It makes no sense. But that's because sometimes we don't understand what words really mean. Imperfect means, and you go to Webster for yourself, imperfect means I have flaws, I make mistakes, I got problems. See, sometimes in the household of faith, we come to church like we ain't got problems. And then sometimes we put on the cloak of, 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 of whatever it is, disguise, right? And you hold yourself together great. Thank you for that. Raise that hand. Praise the Lord. Little man is in agreement. See that? You got to be paying attention. He already said it. He said, I wish they could get it together. (laughs) Bless God. Bless the Lord. But watch this. He said, listen, there's a place. He says, listen, I'm imperfect. I got issues. I got problems. I got a thorn that I done prayed to God three times and won't come out of my side. There's people that keep holding me to my past. There's people that want to kill me and all the rest of this. But at the end of the day, I am not perfect. Say, I am not not perfect. perfect. Now live in that space. You'll understand grace and mercy more when you understand how imperfect you are. But don't prop up your imperfection. And try to make your imperfection the reason that you ain't moving towards perfection. See, my imperfectness can't be my excuse. It's what God shows me. But I got to press into him because he's going to show me that thing that just ain't right. He's going to show me that thing that, oh, you got you struggling there, my son. You got this thing and that thing. And I said, yes, Father, I am imperfect. He said, yes, I know you are, but I love you anyway. Because watch this, perfection means to be made perfect. And that's why we can't do it without Christ. See, you can't be made perfect in Christ without Christ. It's impossible. I used to think that I struggled, real quick, I used to think that I struggled with perfection perfectionism like if you ever put something down on the table and I follow you some people know me and I follow you. people see me in the back on EQ sister Lane they do a great job setting everything out in the back I'll just be walking back there and put something together just a little off just a little bit you know things just they it's just a way that I see things right 
Spirit of excellence, that's what it is. I love God for that. Thank you for helping me with that. But watch this. But the thing that I've learned about myself is that I so desire to have God help me with the things that I'm imperfect about. I so desire to go to him and say, Father, check my heart. Was it, is something wrong inside here? God, did I do that right? Was that, was that what you wanted me to say? Did I, did I say that the way you wanted me to? God, do I got some anger or some unforgiveness? Father, what, is, what, what else do you need to show me? And watch this. He'll show me in his word how I need to do what he wants me to do. Because watch this. But I don't beat myself up for the imperfect aspect of me. Because that's where the perfection takes place. I'm being made perfect in him. That's me being sanctified to be made greater into his image every single day. And I'm not going to put more on myself than he already says I need to do. I can only do one second at a time. Some of us trying to lead the perfect life without Jesus. And then you start to understand how imperfect you are. And then you run away from the process. You can't get made perfect without the process of Christ Jesus. And watch this. And when the Holy Spirit comes really on the inside. I ain't talking about when you front and he only in there on Sundays. I'm talking about every second. You know, look, you know you wasn't supposed to look at that. Yeah. No, 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 no. Call him back and say you're sorry. No, 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 that ain't a blessing. Give them the money back because that what? No, it was an overcharge. Give them the money back. Go back and open the door. You was not nice to that waitress. Go back and say, you saw, I know the food wasn't right, but why did you go off on the waiter? The waiter didn't cook the food. The cook did. And don't go off on the cook because the cook is my child too. What? See, all of them conversations, just a little bald-headed guy here. And I know y'all have them too. There's a whole bunch of imperfection in us. That's okay if we strive to get to Jesus. Right? Okay, okay, Father. You said, you know what? They hurt me. Okay, what am I supposed to do with that hurt? Okay, don't internalize it. Okay, you said, oh, Father, you, you forgave me, so I need to forgive them. They didn't even know what they was doing. Okay, you know what? The, well, she, she was really great. Okay, okay, you know what, I need, okay, I'm going to call them. Because you know what, when somebody hurt me and they called me and made me feel good, you know, I need to go over and speak just because, God, I don't want there to be issues in relationship with other people. Okay, I ain't going to put my mouth on them. You know why? Because they're your child. You see all of that? See, there's a way in this word will help you get to a place where you can just do it better. But why says you got to strive every single day? When we understand that he's the only one that's perfect, the perfection won't hurt as much. There's some stuff, watch this, there's some stuff that we put on imperfection, or we say we're imperfect, then we'll rest in it. You made me cuss you out. Mm -mm. You was taught them words by somebody else. You searched the whole Bible, they ain't going to tell you. They tell you salt water and fresh water can't come from the same mouth, Right? There's some things. Watch this. There's death and life in the power of the tongue. And they who love us shall eat the fruit thereof. Watch it. I love God for this. There might be some stuff that you're speaking that really you're eating. Ooh, let me just stay in the spot. This is, just, this is off to the side. If you reap what you sow and you sow in negative things, then why are you tripping when you get negative stuff? There ain't a curse word out there that's positive. And you sowed it into the atmosphere. Then you wonder when things come back, and I don't want to get on people curses, other stuff. Put whatever your thing is in that spot. I don't want to beat up just on people who might slip and say some wrong stuff, but it's a difference between slipping and saying it and it being a part of your dictionary. Right? Bless the Lord. Let's run here real quick. The next one, stay focused. Say stay focused. There's a place, and it's something that's huge. How many of y'all, raise your hand real quick, drive a car? Just real quick, this is, this, is a, this is one of those experiential messages, right? What I want you to do when you come out, when you get into your car, I want you to understand. I want you to look in your rear view mirror because it's smaller. And then I want you to just focus on your windshield. It's real simple. I'm not asking you to do too much, right? Because when you do that, what's going to happen is you're going to be able to see that what Paul is telling the Philippian church is that you need to forget your past, Watch this, because the things in your rearview mirror are behind you. And any good driver, watch this, they only look behind to see what might be coming up on either the left or the right, but what is behind them, especially when they're backing up. But you don't spend your whole life driving in reverse. 
So the rear view mirror, watch this, and it sits in a spot, and it's there for a reason. But watch this, and I want you just to compare how much bigger your windshield is than your rear view mirror. Because your, your, front, your front windshield actually is where your, your process should be going. My whole life should be brighter. Watch this, because it's much bigger that way than it is behind me. And if it's somebody that always want to talk to me about what happened yesterday or last year or when you did this thing or that thing, I got a windshield I'm looking at. I ain't got time for all these past conversations. We trying to get to a place. Now, if you want to roll with me, we can talk for a minute, but you ain't going to spend hours talking about my past. God saw fit to bless me with another second to make it here. That means he want me to do something different. And he might use some of my past to help me with my future, but I ain't going to dwell on all the negative stuff. Let me tell you, when you're talking to somebody that got a rearview mirror mentality, they always bring up everything that you did in the past. Then they say they forgave you. But they're still talking about it. Watch this. And just something else. When you, when you drive your car, I want you to do something. I want you to pick a point when you're driving your car, and I want you to see how far, when you get that far away from it, you can't even see it no more. Do you know there's some stuff in your life that's so distant from you that you shouldn't even see any longer? There should be some things that when people talk to you, you're like, I don't even remember that. You said I did what? I don't recall. And you know what they want to do? Let me refresh your recollection. And watch this. I want to, this, but this is a space. I want you to understand the person that you're talking to, because they live in a rear view mirror viewpoint, is still like yesterday to them. Now watch this real quick. There could be wounds and we, you got to get help with that. I'm not discounting that aspect of stuff. But there's some things where people want to bring you to a space to bring you down. They want to bring you to a spot. Watch this. Well, I love God for this. We'll run to the last part. Have you ever been on a mountain and somebody gave you like the shot down to the valley? And then watch this, you didn't talk to him, you didn't talk to him real quick. You said, hey, how you doing? I'm, everything is going great and all the rest of this. And then you share a little bit of what's going on. And all the rest of this, yeah, that ain't all that. And you know what happens? You know what happens to your joy? We talked about this in the discipleship training. They want to steal it. The enemy wants it. Your joy is valuable. That's why you can't give it away. Because it gives you strength. Watch this, I love that was huge. We talked about that. That's why I want to steal it. Because if he can steal your strength, you'll get weak. And then you'll watch, watch this, kind of fall off. Run to the last part. Press and hold. Say press and hold. I got happy about the other press, so just go back to when I got happy earlier in the message. Because watch this. There's some things. I'm just take you to an experience. If you ever try to super glue two things together, you can't put the glue there and then walk away. If you really want it to hold, you got to press it. Mm, I love God for that. What if there's some stuff in your life that guy said, I'm putting it there. But in order for it to stick, I got to press and I got to hold. Mm -hmm. You want out of that situation. Ah, uh -uh, you ain't got it yet. I got to press and I got to hold. Mm -hmm. You wonder why you keep going through? Because uh, I got to press and I got to hold. You know why? Because I want you to get this because there's other people that got to get it. But watch this. What if you don't press and you don't hold? Just real quick experiential. I want you to take your first finger and your thumb. Put them just like this. And now what I want you to do is I want you to bring them together and press. Right? Right? You feel the difference in the pressure? Press hard. Press hard. They're your fingers. You ain't going to break them. Press hard. Press hard. Watch this. You, and, and once you look at them, too, they start to change color. Right? It's, it's some blood up at the top, all the rest of that. Some of y'all like, Pastor, how long you going to have me press and hold? I don't want to press and hold no longer. Just keep pressing and keep pressing and keep pressing. Now watch this. Now take them apart. And you know what? If you look, there's a print on the inside of your finger. Did you ever think that God is trying to make sure that he leaves his imprint on you? And you don't get that imprint without pressing and while holding. And watch this, and you control. Because watch this, if you didn't put your fingers together, it wasn't because you wasn't instructed to. But if you put them together and you hold them long enough, 
and you start to understand the difference. Watch this. Um, I got to end with this. There's some people in your life that you will press and hold until you take your last breath. There's some little people that run around my house that I will press into God and hold on for dear life. My relationship with him, because what I'm doing for him and with him is going to bless these others. <clears throat> if I teach them to give up, there'll be a whole bunch of give uppers, right? And if you want a generation that's going to press, and you want a generation that's going to hold on to the progress that we made. Real quick, I'm going to end with this. We talked about, Rock was talking about, and we've, we've been discussing in Black History Month, there's some people that pressed. There's some people that held on to a dream. There's some people that said, death will not keep me from it. There's some folks that said, at the end of the day, there might be a life that I will never see, but I will press. This voting stuff is important. This freedom stuff is important. This equality stuff is important. I want to sit at the exact same spot other people sit at when I want to go eat. I want to sit in the bus at whatever spot I want to go sit in. And at the end of the day, I'm going to press and I'm going to hold until a change comes. Yeah. When you're in God, he guarantees you victory. The only thing is sometimes you got to press and you got to hold in order to get it. Stand to your feet.